I hope your day is going as lovely as ours. You're still watching Breakfast Central right here on News Central TV. And right now we have another top story on our list for Breakfast Central and in quite particular about this particular story because the Zimbabwe cabinet has approved the public sexual harassment policy meant to create a conducive public service workplace environment free from sexual harassment, exploitation and abuse. According to the cabinet, the policy is meant to ensure the protection of the dignity of workers in the public service and maximum work productivity for efficient and effective service delivery. Well, the policy comes at a time when there have been several reports of sexual harassment in government departments and also in the private sector, with women being the most victims of sexual predators. It also comes when reports of gender-based violence and harassment are on a sharp increase in workplaces. Well, joining us all the way from Harare this morning, we do have um, Sikateli Matambo, uh, Director uh, M. Thogeni Women's Forum. Thank you so much for being here this morning on Breakfast Central. Thank you for having me, uh, Joe and Rita. All Thank right. You. So what does this policy entail? You want to tell us about it? Um, thank you very much. Um, the policy in essence really is creating a conducive and safe working environment um, for all workers, uh, more specifically the public service, because it is a Zimbabwe public service sexual harassment policy. And um, it is meant to ensure the protection of the dignity of workers within the public service and ensuring in the process uh, maximum work productivity for efficient and effective service delivery. So this policy is underpinned by several uh, principles that include the need to combat um, sexual harassment within the public service, uh, the provision of a safe um, working environment uh, free from sexual harassment. It also provides for fair and equitable treatment of all people within the workplace as well as the support for diversity and inclusive work practices. And um, it also has mechanisms for redress in cases of sexual harassment in the public service. And uh, the last principle is also, in, uh, is also, is also uh, focusing on informing all members uh, that if allegations of sexual harassment are leveled and substantiated against them, they are liable for such actions. So this is um, in brief what the policy tells and it has come at an opportune time. Thank you. Okay, Matama, these are good, well laid out principles for the, sector, for the sector to curb out sexual harassment. Now, is it going to be mandatory for companies and organizations to adopt this policy as part of their work policies? Um, this is a policy. So policies really are not that binding and it is really focusing on the, on the public service. So it is um, going to assist a lot in that um, the quasi-public sector is also expected um, at the production of um, the development of this policy then to also develop their own sexual harassment policies in line with the, with the public service sexual harassment policy that has been developed. Um, and also looking at issues of uh, sexual harassment and how they're incorporated into other um, government acts uh, such as the Public Service Act as well as the Health Service Act. And um, the when we look at companies and organizations, in as much as they are excluded, it is also important that companies and organizations uh, take opportunity to tap into this policy to craft their own policies as well. And then another plus uh, is that um, government has also recently approved the amendment of the Labor Act um, chapter 28.01 to comprehensively address uh, sexual harassment. So you really realize that all these um, acts coming together also contribute to ensuring that uh, companies, quasi companies, private corporates and so on also get to craft their own policies. Thank you. All right, um, let's look at this um, now. How is the general public going to benefit um, from this policy? Uh, they're going to benefit in various ways. Really, when we look at this policy, we look at uh, protection that is guaranteed because before it was very it was very difficult to charge one. When you look at, we're trying to find an act um, uh, to use in terms of protecting or um, going after the, the perpetrator, it was very difficult. But with this policy, and um, as well as the amendment to the Labor Act, it ensures the protection 
um, of the victims or survivors within the workplace in terms of um, when they're sexually harassed. Um, it also has brought out a reporting, it has brought out reporting mechanisms that are in place. Prior to, it was very difficult in terms of how one should report, but it's clearly laid out in terms of how, what action, what one should do in terms of reporting. Um, it also makes um, the company, the management liable if they do not take action where one reports cases of, um, of, of sexual harassment and nothing is done. So it then greatly uh, gets to benefit um, the, the public, as well as provision of, of uh, counseling of victims within the workplace, something that was never heard of. So in this instance, um, there's the need and appreciation uh, and the realization that victims or survivors need to be provided um, with psychosocial support. And this is um, included within the policy. So these are some of the benefits that the public gets to have as a result of um, the development of this public service sexual harassment, harassment policy in Zimbabwe. Thank All you, right. Joe. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, um, Sikatele Matambo, Director and the Journey Women's Forum. Thank you for being here on Breakfast and uh, expatiating on the new policies. Uh, and definitely, we look forward uh, to see uh, these policies put in place because it's one thing to bring out the policies, another thing for it to be uh, infused into law. Thank you for joining us.